so we will continue with where we left off um, the verse is now the 16th verse so we will chant Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Jnane Natu Tad Jnanam Jnane Natu Tad Jnanam Yesham Nashita Matmanaha Yesham Nashita Matmanaha Esham Aditya Vajnanam Esham Aditya Vajnanam Prakashayati Tatparam Prakashayati Tatparam Okay, so the breakups are important. Jnanena tu Tat Agnyanam it's not tat jnanam tat agnyanam esham nashita matmanaha tesha aditya jnanam prakashayati tat param and the envoy will be esham tu atmanaha jnanena tat agnyanam nashitam kama Yesam tu atmanaha jnanena tat agnyanam nasitam kama tesham jnanam adityavat tad param prakashayati. Yesam. Ye, so tu, whereas, but yesam atmanaha jnanam for that person where atmanaha jnanam, atma jnanam, Tad Agnyanam Nashitam has destroyed that ignorance, that Atma Agnyanam Tesham for such people. So Tesham is to be connected to Yesham. For those people whose Agnyanam has been destroyed by Jnanam, for those people, Jnanam Adityavat Tat Param Prakashayati. This knowledge, Adityavat, like the very sun, Tat Param Prakashati <coughs> reveals that Brahman, reveals that Atma. So, a very clear Pramanam here that meditation cannot you know, destroy Ajnanam, Atta Yoga cannot destroy Ajnanam, Pranayama cannot destroy Ajnanam. Ajnanam can be destroyed only by Jnanam. And for those of you who remember Atma Bodha, Atma Bodha Shankara, Shankara said what? Avirodhitaya karma avidhyam mini vartaye vidya vidyam nihantyeva tejastimira sangavat. So he said, karma avidhyaha na nivartaye. Karma cannot destroy ignorance. Why? Avirodhitaya. It is not in opposition to avidya. So both can exist simultaneously. Both can be friends. So therefore, karma and ignorance, they are not enemies. And therefore, they can coexist peacefully. How do you understand this? Supposing that I have got, let us say, astronomy avidya. I have got ignorance about astronomy. And then I do karma yoga every day. I wash vessels in the ashram. Can both go together? Yes, one is karma and one is avidya. Both go together. 
But my washing the vessels is not going to destroy my Ajnanam. My astronomy Ajnanam will not go away because of my karma. Similarly, puja is a karma, archana is a karma, upasana is a karma, pradakshinam around the temple is a karma. Each of these karmas, we don't say they are useless. They have all got their particular benefits. But one benefit that they do not give is destruction of Ajnana, ignorance. If I want to destroy the astronomy ignorance, what should I do? I have to go to an astronomy professor and he will teach me. And therefore, karma, there are many statements. Karma yoga, karma yoga leads to liberation. Bhakti yoga leads to moksha. Raja yoga leads to moksha. Tantra yoga leads to moksha. All these statements are there. But Veda doesn't accept these statements. The many path philosophy. There are many paths to, to moksha philosophy. It is not acceptable to Veda. It is not acceptable to a Vedantic. We say, yes, there are many paths, but the many paths are for Chitta Shuddhi, purification of the mind. There is only one path to moksha. And that, that's why you have to ensure that you get Chitta Shuddhi, come to Jnanam, and Jnanam alone will give you moksha. So Krishna says here, Jnanena tat ajnanam nashitam. That knowledge alone will destroy this ajnanam. And what kind of Ajnanam? Shankara says, please refer to the previous sloka. What does it say? Yena Ajnanena Avritam. What is Avritam? What has been covered? So, Yena Ajnanena Avritam means that which has been covered by knowledge. What has been covered by knowledge? What is the Avritam thing? Avritam is what? My real nature is Aham akarta abhokta. The, the fact that I am not a doer and not an experiencer, that status has been avritam, has been cover, covered by what? Yena ajnanam. By that ajnanam, it has been covered. So that knowledge, which is the knowledge of I as the atma, as the akarta abhokta atma, that has been covered through ignorance. And therefore, through the knowledge of the Atma as Akarta Abhokta alone, that ignorance will be destroyed. Right? <coughs> now, what is the difference between a person who is, let us say, a very good Bhakta, he is very ethical, and a person who is a Jnani? So, as an ethical person, as a religious person, I will follow ethical values out of Fear, God will punish me if I don't do what he says. But these are all values out of fear. You know, and literally speaking, that is not a very good approach. Because though your ultimate actions may be not harmful to others, the actions are being driven by what? By fear. What about the jnani? That jnani's Actions are the same actions as this religious person's actions, but the jnani's actions are driven by understanding of the Shastra, not by fear. And therefore, you should follow dharmic values because of understanding the value of following dharma. This is what Shastra wants you to do. Understand that following dharma has benefits and therefore I should follow that dharma. Not because I am afraid of Ishwara. Of course, fear of Ishwara and therefore being dharmic is better than being an astika. But that cannot be an objective, a final destination. Not, that cannot be. Then how to get this Atma Jnanam? So, do we have Atma Jnanam at all? Is a question which can be asked. Does everybody have some form of Atma Jnanam? And the answer is yes. Because whenever you begin a sentence about yourself, you will say, I am. If I ask you who you are, you will say, I am. So that means that you know that you are something. Right? 
But the problem is that after the I am, you add adjectives. You say I am man, I am woman, I am a teacher, I am a carpenter, I am a husband, I am a child, I am a mother, all this, I am a sadaka, all these things you make. So addition of any other word, any other noun after the word I am, after the words I am, that causes confusion. Because I am is really Atmanyanam. You know that you are. And therefore, you don't require any fresh Atma Jnanam. You just require some amount of clarity about what the term I means. And for this clarity, meditation is not going to help. You have to go to a teacher. And Krishna said, Tadviddi Pratipatena Pariprasnena Sevaya Upadekshyantite Jnanam Jnanina Sattva Darshinaha In the last chapter, he said that systematic Consistent study of Vedantic scriptures for a sufficient period of time under the guidance of a competent Acharya. That is our definition of Savanam. The systematic and consistent study under the guidance of a competent Acharya for a sufficient length of time. What do we call it? We call it Jnana Yoga. And what will that Jnana Yoga do? Your confused Atma Jnanam will be converted into Clear Atma Jnana. You will learn to, whenever you say I, <clears throat> you will learn to exclude the Upadis, the body, mind, sense complex from the meaning of the term I. And whenever you say I, I will mean Satchit Anda only. And therefore Krishna says Tesham. Tesham is for those people, for those seekers who seek in this manner only, by going to a teacher and learning, jnanam prakashayati, knowledge will reveal tat param, their own higher nature to them, which is what Brahman only. Param Brahma is their own higher nature. This will be revealed to them by the Shastra jnanam. And how does this knowledge come? How clear is it? Adityavat. Like the sun when it comes up, the whole landscape becomes very clear. In the same way, Shravanam gives Jnanam. Mananam makes that Jnanam doubtless, free of doubts, clear and complete. Then what does Nididhyasanam do? It takes care of the Viparita Bhavana, all the habitual thinking habits which prevent the knowledge from giving you the benefits of the knowledge. In other words, Nididhyasanam will convert you from a triangular format jiva into a binary format jiva. Okay, so this is what is being said. That you have to have chitashuddhi, then you have to come to jnanam, the jnanam will give you knowledge, mananam will make it clear and complete. In spite of all that, if you are not experiencing the, the benefits of jnanam, which is basically freedom from insecurity, then, then you need to do Nididhyasanam because there are some habitual thinking patterns which are called Viparita Bhavana. Once Viparita Bhavana is taken care of, you will no longer think of yourself as a Jiva. Therefore, you will not be in the Jiva Jagat Ishwara format which we call triangular format. But you will replace the word Jiva by the word Atma and therefore you will be in the Atma Anatma format which we call the binary format. Okay. Now, there is a subsidiary topic, an aside topic which I would like to take up because it's an important topic. Why is this topic important? Because look at the verse. What does it say? It says, uh, one second. So, the 15th verse, he says, Ajnanena avritam jnanam. Okay, knowledge is covered by ignorance. That is what the 15th verse says. Ajnanena avritam jnanam. And therefore, tena muhyanti jantavaha. Therefore, people are confused because their knowledge is covered by ajnana. Okay, Shankara doesn't talk about this, but a lot of uh, other commentators take up this topic. In fact, this is a very, among the Vedantic scholarly community, this is a big debate. And what is the debate? 
डिबेट इज इज अज्ञानम भाव रूप और अभाव रूप विच मीन्स इज इग्नोरेंस इन द फॉर्म ऑफ समथिंग विच एग्जिस्ट और इज इग्नोरेंस इन द फॉर्म ऑफ समथिंग विच डज नॉट एग्जिस्ट to understand this uh, think of um, darkness when you say darkness what is it that you mean I'm sorry i can't hear any of you absence of light absence of light of light so you say darkness absence of light and therefore these vedantic scholars they say when we say agnyanam is it to be taken in that same interpretation does it means absence of gnanam why because the word absence is abhava in sanskrit absence means abhava bhava means presence so is agnyanam to be taken as gnanam abhava so that is the question here is this अज्ञानम इन द फॉर्म ऑफ अभाव रूपा और भाव रूपा डज अज्ञानम एग्जिस्ट एज अ पॉजिटिव आइडेंटिटी और डज इट इज इट अ नेगेटिव दैट इज टू से नॉन एग्जिस्टिंग एंटिटी इज इट अ एग्जिस्टिंग पॉजिटिव एंटिटी और इज इट अ एग्जिस्टिंग नेगेटिव एंटिटी इट्स अ भाव रूपा यू हैव टू एक्सप्लेन whenever you say bhava roopa you have to explain sir it's an it error a, in understanding it's Sorry? a it's a it's knowing that you are atman i am talking so about ignorance is... i am talking about ignorance it's an ignorance. error in understanding sir sorry it's an error in understanding no that is a different interpretation i am saying very clearly is it to be taken as ignorance exists as a positive entity or ignorance exists as a negative entity why is it important the discussion is important because of our quote agnyanena avritam gnanam agnyanam covers gnanam so it why, is abhav why is, why is it because it, it is abhav rupa because it covers so then gyan is not av- available to you you're not understood so ignorance is if abhava rupa is there it means it is not there And ignorance it is... is there <coughs> it is bhava rupa it has because we are saying yeah we are saying that it, it is covers the ignorance that means it exists it, it is to be removed the so very knowledge exists. that ignorance is present reflects the yes, present knowledge behind it So I I don't think it should go into this sort of interpretation. The question is very simple: Is ignorance in the form of an existing entity, or is it in the form of a non-existing entity? And the reason it becomes important. The reason it becomes important is because Krishna is saying, "Gyanam, agnyanam, avratam. Agnyanam covers gyanam." And the question, therefore, will be that. If agnyanam is in the form of a non-existing entity, how can it cover? Cover, yes. No, it does exist. Sir, uh, if so we look at atma gyanam as self, as always being there. No, 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 so no, no, no. Don't get into all this. No? I am asking a very simple question: Is it in the form of existing or non-existing? And it has answer has to be it's in the form of existing, because if it's a non-existing entity, where is the question of it covering anything? You cannot say I am okay. feeling cold, but I shall cover myself with a non-existent blanket. Okay, yeah, right. So that is what the answer is. And remember, here it is important because in many other um, darshanams, like Dwaita Dwaita darshanam, Vishistha Dwaita darshanam, and even some other Advaita Advaitins, they say that ignorance is abhava rupa. It is in the form of non-existing entity. But our traditional acharyas don't agree. and in fact there is a commentary on the bhagavad gita by madhusudana madhusudana saraswati do you remember the name of the commentary godartha dipika right so he says in his commentary on the 15th verse he says that 
in the last verse it says, in the 15th verse it says that Ajnanam covers the intellect. And therefore, Jantavaha Muhyanti, people are confused. And he says, how can you say that something which does not exist does the action of covering? Therefore, he says, uh, this Ajnanam has to be an existing entity. Okay, that is a interpretation by Madhusudana, Madhusudana Saraswati, who is a very famous traditional Acharya. <coughs> Secondly, though it's not said here, but what does it say? It says, now look at that verse, that verse which we are which we are seeing. What does it say? Jnanena tat agnanam nashitam. Okay. He says, Jnanam is destroying Ajnanam. If this Ajnanam was not, was in the, in the form of a non-existent entity, why would Krishna say that it destroys? Because a non-existent thing cannot be destroyed. You see, there are two arguments therefore. One is that Ajnanam covers the intellect, therefore it has to be Bhavarupa, it has to be an existing entity. Secondly, Jnanam destroys Ajnanam and non-existent entity cannot be destroyed and therefore Ajnanam is existing entity. So this is the understanding that whenever we say Ajnanam, we should not come, though there, is, there are many, many, you know, uh, examples in the scriptures where the Ajnanam is compared to Tamaha, darkness. But Normally, we, we say darkness is absence of light. This is not the understanding that we should have when we talk about Ajnanam. We should take Ajnanam as a positive existing entity. I hope the, the discussion is clear. Okay, That is what this whole discussion was about. Do not think that Ajnanam is a non-existing entity. It's an existing entity because of what has been said in the last two verses. Two reasons were given. One is it covers. Another, it can be destroyed. Okay, so that, please remember that in the future. And of course, another point coming out of this is that whenever you are discussing Shastram or trying to interpret, interpret directly. Don't look at various, you know, something which you have learned somewhere else in some other uh, chapter and try to put it together. Interpretation here is, is it existing or is it not existing? As simply as much as that. Don't bring in extraneous factors. It's good to try to do mananam, but you should be clear about the method of mananam. Okay. We'll look at the 17th verse, which we will chant. Oh, Macharya? Yeah. Can I ask him? So, in this um, verse, we are comparing uh, ignorance with darkness only. No. So, we are not. No, aren't we saying that um, like the sun, um, like the sun removes the darkness? Um, Does this sun, when you say darkness, can you say darkness covers light? No. That's no. exactly the exactly the meaning. Okay. Here. Darkness yeah. cannot cover light, and therefore agnanam cannot be compared to darkness because you're saying yeah. agnanam covers darkness. So it covers uh, agnanam. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Right. Number 17, verse number 17, we will chant. Tad buddhayas tadatmanam. Tad buddhayas tadatmanam. Tad nishthas tad parayanaha. Tad nishthas tad parayanaha. Gachyantya punaravrittim. Jnana nirdhuta kalmasha. Okay. So, the breakups we will give you because of all complex words. Tad buddhayaha. Tadat. Manaha Tan Nishtaha Tat Parayanaha Then Gachanti A Punavratim 
so that is important the gachantya the tya breaks into e plus a so gachanti plus a punaravrittim jnana nirdhuta kalvashaha and if you want the anvaya tat buddhaya tat atmanah tan nishtaha tat parayanah jnana nirdhuta kalmashah apunar avrittim gachanti so he says tat buddhaya that person whose intellect has got tat buddhi so tat here refers to brahman so tat buddha means brahman buddhaya that person who understands that he is brahman tat atmanah who knows that that brahman is atma and again i'll repeat here whenever we use the word atma usually we think of it as some object which we have to understand so all in all these from now onwards at least whenever you use the word atma remember the sanskrit meaning of atma is what i just as you say main in hindi i in english atma in sanskrit means i okay so try to replace that meaning in your mind so tad buddhaya tad atmanah means that intellect who has got the understanding which has got the understanding that i am brahman atma is brahman i am brahman and tat nishtah tan nishtah he is committed to that activity that spiritual activity of study which is to know that aham brahma asmi and tat parayanah having that brahman as my ultimate goal parayanah is ultimate goal so tat here again is brahman having brahman as the ultimate goal which means having moksha as the ultimate goal and that person what has happened to that person kalmashah all impurities jnana nirdhutah have been destroyed by knowledge all impurities have been destroyed by knowledge so jnana nirdhuta kalmashah what happens to such a person avrittim apunarah he has no further but he attains apunarah avritti he attains the state of no rebirth kachanti he gains that state so a little complex sanskrit but i'll read out in english for you those who have the knowledge of that brahman as the very atma as themselves who are established in that brahman who have that brahman as the ultimate goal of their lives have moksha as the ultimate goal of their lives and whose impurities have been destroyed by knowledge they attain the goal of non return to the to the world of not having a rebirth at all very beautiful verse it talks about the various sadhanas that a person goes through in his spiritual journey okay one very comprehensive verse so i'll just rearrange all these sadhanas for the sake of you know chronological chrono chronological consistency they are here they are not given in the chronological order but i am rearranging them so that they appear in the right time wise order the right chronological order the first one will be the second word the first line the last part of it tat parayana so tat parayana can be broken tat plus param plus ayanam okay my own higher self parayana means the ultimate goal of my life tat param is the highest goal so that own highest goal of my life which is what which is to have jnana nishtha which is to be in a binary format okay that parayana is the movement towards that goal of my life which is to be in binary format which is to be in jnana nishtha avastha 
what is the problem right now i am ahankara okay i am the rc i am identified in the binary format because i am jiva jagatishwaraha i am this miserable jiva and i am living in this world which troubles me all the time and i need ishwara to support me and i run to ishwara every time so as the ahankara i am dependent upon various external factors to be happy and secure and the smallest thing can upset me you know every relationship is subject to strain and problems because i cannot control other people's behavior and therefore i expect certain type of behavior from other people and when they don't behave in that manner i get upset i don't know why my husband did this i don't know why my wife is like that i don't know why my children talk like this you no know, and so on and as the number of people with whom we interact increases obviously the number of people who don't behave in the ma- manner that i want them to behave that also increases and therefore the number of potential disturbing factors to my mind that also increases so very com- very simple logic so there is a saying sarvam paravasham dukham dependence on external factors is the root of all unhappiness because all the time i have to keep on adjusting to other people and this is what i try to do throughout my life you know and sometimes if i am lucky by the time i am 95 i understand that i cannot change other people but by that time it is too late what is the intelligent outlook i have to be happy and secure not because somebody behaves in some manner or not because somebody behaves in a manner in which i expect them to behave so not because of external conditions but i should be happy and secure in spite of any external condition in spite of any behavioral problems of other people and this non conditional happiness which comes from internally it comes internally from you this is called inner freedom this is called moksha this independence from being dependent upon anybody else for your happiness that indeed is another name for atma for brahman moksha is not going to the forest it is not some event which will occur in time or maybe after my death moksha is the capacity to be comfortable even when situations are uncomfortable moksha is the capacity for my mind not to be un- not to be disturbed in spite of the whole world behaving behaving in a disturbing manner and once i am able to do this then i am not afraid of my future because i know that i am purna i am complete and i know that nothing can touch that purnatva and that is why krishna said in the second chapter apuryamanam achalam pratishtham samudram apah pravishanti advat tadvat kamayam pravishanti sarve sa shantim apnoti na kama kami you remember the 70th verse i am like the ocean experiences are like the waves wonderful experiences will come a wonderful wave will come terrible experiences will come a terrible wave will come experiences may not come at all so waves may not come at all but whatever it is whether the whole river empties into me or nothing empties into me i am still the ocean i am purnaha i am complete this is the state of a gnani's mind and therefore the effort which we should undertake in our spiritual journey never try to change the world the struggle should if at all there is a struggle it should be only to change myself how what type of change from the dependent lower self i should try to move to the independent higher self once <laughs> the struggle has which i undertake in my life has moved away from trying to reform the world and moved into transforming myself then and then only i am a vedantic seeker once i have known that this self transformation is required 
then I have become Tat Parayanaha. This is the first stage. I have got direction in my life. What is the next, next stage? The next stage he says, Tat Buddhayaha. So Tat means, as I said, Tat means Brahman, Buddhi means Jnanam. Tat Buddhaya means Atma Jnanam, Brahma Jnanam. So that Buddhi which has the knowledge of Brahman. Can I remember here, we have to supply various stages, right? So first was the desire to transform yourself, knowing that security does not lie in the external world and security has to be discovered internally, which we said Tat Parayanaha. Then now the next stage in the verse is Atma Jnanam. Before that, you have to supply, you have to go through all the intermediate stages. Karma Yoga, Upasana Yoga, Sravanam, Mananam, Nivivyasanam. Having done these five, then Tad Buddhayaha, you have got the knowledge of Brahman. But even here, Jnanam may be, as I said, when I talk about Atma, I think of Atma as a third party. And therefore, Jnanam may be Paroksha Jnanam. I may know what Brahman is, but I don't identify with that Brahman. I know what my higher self is, but I don't claim that higher self. I continue to identify with my lower self only as a father, as a husband, as a grandfather. That Deha Abhimanam, bodily identification, I continue to have. You know, like this, in Bombay, there are these uh, chawls, you know, Dharavi, for example, one big chawl. And there's a lot of uh, people who have uh, of course, government, I think, mostly, who have given them good houses. They have built good houses for them so that they can come out of their stalls and live in the houses. But what do these people do? They give the house on rent and they go back to their stalls. You know? So don't be like that. Don't continue to be the ahankara after having known that you are not the ahankara. And therefore, you still have your, if you have your identification of the body, more sadhana is necessary. The shifting, whenever I use the word I, shifting from the RC to the OC, shifting from the upadi contained consciousness, which is the RC, to the non upadi contained consciousness, which is the OC. This, in fact, is the single uh, in a step which is the most difficult <coughs> and which takes the longest time. Knowing about Brahman is easy. Dropping the identification with the lower self, which is your body-mind complex, that is not easy. And the Krishna says, Tat Atmanaha. So, Tat Atmanaha here means identifying with that Atma, which is the higher self. And therefore, Namata na Pita na Guru na Vashishya na Bandhu na Mitram. Remember that mental sannyasa is unavoidable. At least mental sannyasa. And sannyasa ashram, in fact, is recommended mostly only to facilitate this identification, this re-identification from the lower self to the higher self. And that's why you have these verses, na mata, na pita, na guru, na shishya, na bandhu, na mitram. Right? So, the point is that you have to learn to disidentify from the lower self. That is called sannyasa. You may or may not wear those saffron robes but mental sannyasa you cannot avoid in your journey. And having understood the higher nature, having claimed yourself as a higher nature, you can still decide to play the role of a husband or a wife, to play the role of a brother or a guru or a shishya. But the key word is what? Role. It is a, every action you are doing is converted into role playing. I know that I am Brahman and therefore I should constantly remind myself that all my activities are acting only. I am doing some acting, some role playing and therefore the next and final stage is Tannishta. So once a person deliberately practices this constant reminding, constantly reminding himself that I am Brahman but through this body I am playing the role of a husband or of a grandfather or of a teacher. That is Tannishtha. Also called Nididhyasanam. And that is why we have so many 
of these nivir nivirasanam slokas you know mano buddhi ahankara chittani naham nacha shotra jeeve nacha grana netre nacha vyoma bhumi hi na tejo na vayu chidananda roopa shivoham shivoham there are so many of this name dvaish dvaisha raga name loba moha madu naiva me naiva matsarya bhavah na dharmo na chartho na kamo na moksha chidananda roopa shivoham shivoham all this are meant for what for facilitating this transition from the lower eye to the higher eye i am not the instruments i am the consciousness behind the instruments and the more i practice when i repeatedly practice this 24 by 7 by 365 then it becomes spontaneous and natural this internal transformation takes a lot of time and the one transformation is complete that is what krishna is referring to here as tannishtha so these are the four stages of knowledge first discover a value for this for discovering the higher self you know you have to value the higher self second stage is to go and discover the higher self the third stage is to identify with the higher self and gradually you have the identification with the body mind sense complex which is the lower self and the fourth and final stage is when the effort to identify the with the higher self has resolved and that identification with the higher self has become natural <clears throat> when that happens what happens jnana nirdhuta kalmashah they are free from all the impurities so what sort of impurities are there ajnanam is one impurity after studying this that is before studying studying the scriptures after shravanam ajnanam is gone but samshaya is there doubt is there another impurity so shravanam disposes of the impurity called ajnanam mananam disposes of the of the impurity called samshaya doubt and after you have doubt plus ajnanam there are still other impurities habitual vasanas the habitual identification with your body mind sense complex habitual thinking patterns that continues that is the third impurity which is called viparyaya therefore ajnanam samshaya viparyaya ignorance doubt and habitual thinking patterns habitual body identifications these are all covered under the term kalmasha over here and what happens to this kalmasha they are nirdhutam they are completely wiped out by the power of the gnanam by the fire of gnanam they are burnt and such a person who has done gone through these four stages he is called a jivan muktaha and he will enjoy complete freedom from insecurity while he lives and once the prarabdha karma is over then is krishna says gachanti apunavrittim apunaravrittim he gets punara avritti he freedom from coming back so he attains attains videha mukti so punaha na avritti not again coming back to this loka which means not being again associated with another body that state is not there for such a person we have to note that we should not confuse how this aparoksha gnanam is being gained okay aparoksha gnanam is what the gnanam that i am brahman don't think that nididhyasanam gives you that knowledge the knowledge that i am brahman comes from shravanam alone what does nididhyasanam do nididhyasanam's work is to remove viparita bhavana and once the viparita bhavana that habitual thinking patterns once they are removed that same shravanam which initially gave you paroksha gnanam knowledge of atma as a third party will now give you aparoksha gnanam knowledge of atma as yourself so aparoksha gnanam is gained only through shravanam and this is i'm repeating because a lot of people confuse the scriptural teaching saying that nididhyasanam produces aparoksha gnanam it doesn't Nidhi dhyasanam is not for producing aparoksha gyanam. Aparoksha gyanam is produced by ravanam only. Nidhi dhyasanam is for repeat for removing the 
habitual thinking patterns, viparita bhavana, viparyaya. So removing that. In other words, vididhyasanam is for changing the format from the triangular format, jiva, jagat, ishvara format to atma, anatma, the binary format. And therefore, the word nishtha, jnana nishtha, the nishtha has to be understood as brahmani eva avasthanam, abiding as brahman alone. In our words, abiding in the binary format in our language. And this nididhyasanam can be of two forms. And we have seen this earlier. So, we'll just repeat that. Samadhi abhyasa rupa, which is an exclusive Dedication to meditation for a particular time period requiring posture, all those things which have been covered by Patanjali. And there is another Nididhyasanam which we call Brahma Abhyasarupa, which is 24 by 7, which you saw in an earlier verse, Pashyan Srinman, Prashan Jignan, all those. Okay. So by saying that Gachanti, that person goes, he drops his body. And a punar avrittim, he does not come back. Krishna is presenting videha mukti as one of the benefits of jnana. Right. Okay. Now, when we think of videha mukti, normally, I mean, even uh, advanced students, what is the conception of videha mukti? When I say you will get videha mukti, what is the conception? After death. No, after death is okay. But uh, we'll explain it more vedantically. That means Sukhshma Sarira is also um, resolved and it will not come take another physical body. What is the difference between Jivan Mukti and Vidya Mukti? Jivan Mukti is still physical body there. Okay. Because of Prarabdha whatever is left. Correct. Therefore, the normal thinking is that whenever I think about Videha Mukti, I say I have become a Jivan Mukta and now I have to exhaust the Prarabdha of this body and then I will get Videha Mukti. So, Videha Mukti, is it a future event or a already done event? Natural consequence. In the future world. Sir, Nishth, it will be irrelevant okay. because he has he no longer has the Abhiman. It is it is already it's it just is done. already done. Oh. What is done? It Vidya is Mukti already is done. done. Where is Vidya Mukti done? Vidya Mukti means your body is there. Your body is there. You, you don't identify with the body. Yes, the identity. Identity. That is not the definition of Vidya Mukti. Vidya Mukti means when the body is Videha, without the body. So that means you will not take birth. So, that's what I am saying. The normal concept when we talk about Videha Mukti and Jivan Mukti is that I have got Jivan Mukti through all the sadhana which I have done and therefore now I am Jivan Muktaha and now I have to wait for the prarabdha of the body to be exhausted and then I will get Videha Mukti. Okay, so this means it's a future event. Videha Mukti is a future event. But always remember that all these terms, Jivan Mukti, Videha Mukti, all these terms are from the Vyavaharika angle only. Because it is, the, it is in Vyavaharika that you have a body. What are you really? Tastram tells you that you are Brahman. Right? From the Paramarthika angle, you are Brahman. And since you are Brahman, you are Akarta, you have Abhokta, and you are Asangaha. And if you are Asangaha, where is the Sambandha with the body? Right? So there are three reasons. I am free from karma, I am Asangaha, and the body is Mithya. How can I, the Satya Brahman, who, who am Asangaha, who have no karma, who have Akarta and Abhokta, how can I have a sambandha, a connection with the mithya body is the question. And therefore, remember that from the 
the shastra wants you to think that you are nitya videha muktaha that you are free from a body always that is why nididhyasanam what does it do the other sort of videha mukti you know where i have a body i am jivan mukta now and then the, when the body dies then i shall be videha mukta that is a technical name it's called a sadhya videha mukta something is going to happen as a sadhyam as a product of my sadhana but shastra wants you to know that you are a nitya videha mukta you never had a body at all and therefore once i come to nididhyasanam i have to drop the idea that i am going to get videha mukti because i am nitya videha mukta so here in this shloka videha mukti is presented as jnana phalam right and in the next shloka krishna takes up the topic of jivan mukti which actually if you think of it it is in reverse order jivan mukti should have first come and then videha mukti should have come but here krishna has taken up that topic first okay any questions before you go to that very very important oh, understanding oh, part yeah Uh, aparaksha jnana and aparaksha anubhuti are these two words same no i will not uh, answer that question now because anubhuti normally means experience and there is a whole text called anu- aparaksha anubhuti which we will do so not later in the prakrana granta class so we will park that for a time being uh, so aparaksha jnana the- simply means that i know that i am brahma Aparoksha means not away. Paroksha means different, away. So, aparoksha uh, jnana is only applicable for the self knowledge. Uh, we know many things, but in that case, we are not calling aparoksha jnana, right? No, you may know as what when I say describe Brahman. What would you say? Give me one description of Brahman. Um. independent uh, uh uh it's not dependent on body uh, minds and on leg and it uh, uh space okay, let, let uh, me, not let limited by space well let's simply say brahman is not born brahman does not die two of its immediate descriptors yeah. that statement is if that statement is what you are making that is paroksha jnana but if you are saying i am i am never born and i will never die that is aparoksha jnana sir thanks also sir the way you have explained vidya mukti and jivan mukti so it's basically one and the same kind of situation i mean there is no preceding or uh, you know event or something because they are it pretty much happening at the same time how do you say that because you said the when the realization is there that the body is already not you not associated with that isn't that the jivan mukti state yes when you know that you are not the body it is the jivan mukti state but these words jivan mukti and videha mukti are used in teaching and teaching takes place where in vyavaharika and baramardika in vyavaharika yeah. because in vyavaharika you need a body to talk you need a body to listen so any whenever you hear these statements in the scripture you should not be confused but scripture is really telling you that all this is nonsense basically you are brahman but you cannot know that from paramarthika state because at the paramarthika state you don't have a mind and knowledge requires a mind and therefore to know any even to know that you are brahman you need to be in the vyavaharika state which means the same brahman but with upadis and wherever when you have upadi the upadi is born and the upadi dies and therefore you say jivan mukti and videha mukti but the real understanding is what i am not connected to the body at all and therefore how does it matter when this body comes and doesn't come back again or is reborn a thousand times it should make no difference to me at all to aparoksha jnana means some Upper, what is aparoksha and paroksha? I am not. Understood. I just told you. If you say Brahman is 
born and Brahman, Brahman does not get born, Brahman does not die. That is Paroksha Jnana. When you say, I am not born and I don't die, that is Aparoksha Jnana. So, no, no discrimination. I am Brahman. So. No. Apar paroksha means separate from you. So if you think of Brahman as some object to be studied about, then it is Paroksha Jnana. If you think of Brahman as yourself, if you think of every description in the scripture, not as a description of Brahman, but as a description of yourself, then it is a paroksha. That is one very important point which you have to drive continuously because your mind is, is conditioned to think of I am the knower and I have knowledge about something. As long as that conditioning of pramata, pramanam and pramayam is there, it is paroksha jnana. Om Acharya Ji, yes, may please. I ask, uh, you mentioned that uh, while studying the scriptures, the correct method of mannanam should be followed. Could you please uh, throw some light on that? How should one do mannanam? How should do one do mannanam? You have to ask yourself whether the statement of the Shastram is acceptable to you. Only you can tell, is there a doubt or not? So if Shastram says you are Atma, then you ask yourself, do I accept that statement? Okay. And if you do, then there is no doubt. But if you don't, then you have to analyze for the why don't I accept. <coughs> so the usual answer will be because I will die. I am born and I will die. That's an answer. I don't accept that I am Atma. Because I am born and I die. So what is the manunam for that? Then uh, the body dies. So what happens then? So uh, do I still exist? I am still when it is there. So that is the manunam. That I am not able to accept the statement that I am Atma because I think I am born and I die. And therefore the definition of I which Shastram is giving is different from the definition of I which I am taking. And therefore, I should revise the definition. That is the Mananam stage. Because what Shastram is saying I is the Lakshyartham of the word I. What you are taking as I is the Vachyartham okay. of the word I. And that's the Mananam process. And therefore, you each of these doubts you resolve using this Mananam. Okay, Acharya. Thank you. Acharya ji, so in this first line, the Tat Parayanaha is the stage of Mumukshu, the first stage. No, Can somebody please stop talking about the Dud? Yeah. So, Acharya ji, you said Tat Parayanaha is the stage when you have the desire for this higher knowledge. Yeah. So, so it is that stage which we call uh, mukshu. It is the mukshu stage. When you, when you understand that whatever you are doing is not going to give you permanent happiness. Once you have understood that, and then you know that then therefore I should seek for happiness inside. That is the tatparana stage. And tatbuddhaya is the jnana. Tatbuddhaya is a jnana stage. You have know that you are Brahman. But between all that you have to add the other stages. Ji. You have to add karma yoga, upasana yoga, shamanam, mananam, nididhyam. Before that, after tat parayana. And before tat buddha, yeah. yes. Ji. Yes. And then after that is the next stage, tan nishtaha, jnana nishtha. Nididhyasanam is over. Tad atmanam. That's to learn it, identify yourself as atma. Okay. So these are the four stages. Yes. Inclusive of the Karma Yoga Upasana Yoga. So those have to be added separately. Okay. So you can number the Thank stages you. more. Yeah. Thank you. So this is a verse which is worthwhile, you know, constantly thinking about because it contains the entire spiritual journey. And there are a few verses like that in, in as you as you go to further chapters you will find that there are a few more verses like that. 
so many such verses are beautiful they present to you the entire spiritual journey okay if there are no more questions then we can stop here om varnamada varnamidam purnat purnamadhe purnamasya purnamaya purnam eva shishyate om shanti 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 om tat sat om tat om tat sat shivaya thank you thank you thank you